In today's video, we're gonna be having another one of those break down the race, round by round by round kind of videos for two reasons. Number one, you guys really like this kind of style of video and you asked for more, so here it is. And number two, I went racing at a track where I didn't have my family with me and I had very limited footage. So this is what you get, enjoy. <laughs> Before we get into today's video, can we please take one, one minute to thank today's video sponsor, which is Jones Transmission Cooling Systems. You already know who they are. Jones Transmission Cooling Systems, making the transmission fluid pump that you need in the late rounds especially. That's where that product comes in super clutch. I'm way too old to use super clutch. Keeping your transmission temperatures consistent in the late rounds when there's money on the line, when it really, really matters, it is made so easy and so simple with the use of a Jones pump. I have a whole video about it. I will link it down in the description. And do not forget to use discount code GALLSTAR5. Get yourself 5% off of your pump from Jones Transmission Cooling Systems. Give them a call, head on over to their website, phone numbers, links, all the things down in the description. Call up Brandon, call up Bob. Super nice guys, super great customer service. And tell them, hey yo yo, Golf Star 5, wanna save some coin? It is time, this is time to go and get yourself one of those Jones transmission cooling systems. Links down in the description. Now let's get in to today's video. So normally I wouldn't include a time hit in a video like this, but this was my first ever lap down this racetrack. I had never been to this facility before until this lap. This was attempt number one down this racetrack. So there's just a, a few things to remember, especially on your first lap down the racetrack. In fact, things to remember anytime you go to a different racetrack, the things I try to do my first lap down the track, especially in this particular case, was just to find everything. Where is the finish line? What does it look like? Are you going to be able to find it when you need to when you're actually racing? What does the starting line look like? Are you backing up straight? Are you in the groove? Where is the groove? How big is the groove? What is the rollout like? I know that if you're racing on high level racetracks, uh, the rollout should be consistent, it should be measured out, it should be the same, but that's just simply not the case in some of the racetracks that I race on, so I always like to pay attention to what does that rollout feel like. I like backing through the beams really slowly so I can watch them turn back off as I'm backing through, so I really have an idea of what that rollout is like. I don't want to be rolling in pre-stage and then bump in, bump in, and be surprised that the stage ball was coming. I'd like to get a feel for that rollout, and those are just a couple things that I like to think about my first lap down the track. So I had a pretty good lap here, 002 up front, and the car ran a 493.8, headed into the first round. Round number one decided to put a 495 on the car just because of how much uncertainty there was. I mean, I've had one lap down this track. I can't say that I'm super confident in my dial. I mean, I have zero data. I don't know how consistent the starting line is. I don't, I don't know anything. There's just a lot of uncertainty. The track is super clean. The track is super smooth. I don't have any reason to doubt it, but I just, didn't know because of the lack of data, so I decided to throw 495 up on the board, uh, which means I should have been carrying one to two numbers, is kind of how I decided to run the race. Unfortunately, I was close to being ineligible off the hit when I missed the bulb. I was 35 up front here, guys, uh, because I suck, and uh, ended up taking 19 stripe uh, on a 645 door car. Uh, I needed to be 002 or better on the finish line, especially with that terrible reaction time. But that is why they have buyback windows, and I took advantage of it on this particular day. As my car was set to turn a 492, a high 492 here, and off of 495, I was I was under running a 493 with a two. 
So that brings me to round number two. And of course it's dark out, and I apologize for the terrible video quality here. I had terrible GoPro settings and uh, didn't catch it, and that is the reason why this is uh, kind of some muddy, disgusting footage. But uh, I had a 492 up on the board here just because of the weather changing, and um, I was thinking that's kind of where the car was going to run. I was a little bit more comfortable here because of uh, the ET difference not being too drastic. 525 is the dial in the other lane. Fortunately, I was able to end up with a decent reaction time advantage on this lap, and I tightened it up to a 003 stripe. Uh, these shorter cars, you have to really pay attention to what you're looking at, and that is what I like to do in the burnout box and the staging lanes. Um, any chance that I can kind of get to size up the competition, especially on these shorter dragsters, they're a little bit different to look at. So if you wheel up there and try to run on the roll cage or try to run on the windshield, whatever you do, uh, you're probably going to end up with a little bit too much stripe. So uh, make sure you know what you're looking at on the different cars that you're going to line up with. Um, ended up being able to at least do the finish line right here. Um, the 003 stripe with an 024 light uh, is good for the win here in round number two. All right, rolling into round number three here, decided to put a 494 up on the scoreboard. That's an honest dial. Uh, the car had been running really consistent. I decided to trust my equipment because it just was flat working that well. Now, in the other lane, I got a 502, uh, so the ET difference is very, very, very small. And uh, I had a really, really good view of this race, especially off of the hit. I got a look early right after the hit and I thought man I must have the reaction time advantage here so was able to tighten it up really nicely on the big end yet here again just because this one was real easy to look at um, with a 14 ball 003 wind stripe again put me at a 495.9 safe for the win here in round number three figured my car would probably run a 493.0 based on the increments uh, so that set us up into round number four In round number four, I decided to click the number one more honest uh, just because there was a 609 door car in the other lane and I figured, you know, that's going to be a tough one to judge and, uh, you know, I thought I would be a low, low 493 the past before and I thought maybe it would pick up just a little bit from there. So again, I was dialed honest here in round number four, uh, ended up putting an 017 up for the reaction time there and ended up with the third pass in a row 003 win stripe and that was just straight luck on this pass you guys you can kind of kind of hear me up on the finish line uh, I dumped it and then just kind of gently got in the throttle and nabbed the stripe just by a skosh 003 and I think that my car would have slowed up just a skosh on this pass uh, 493 middle 493 is kind of where I estimate uh, what the car would have ran. Ended up running a 496.1 off of 492. Safe for the win here. Round number four. Moving in to round number five. Well, you still got to go in that far lane just so you get a good hit over there, right? I, I got a single. Well, they went like this. All right. So my competitor actually broke in round number five. Uh, so I took the opportunity to head on over into the left lane because I had not yet been in the left lane on this racetrack ever. So decided to take a hit over in the left lane, try to get some data. I must have missed the tree a little bit. I was 32 up front. It was a good time to have that ball. Um, and the car ran a 4. 93.2 and uh, that was that was not a surprise to me so car was consistent running 493s um, and we're we're ready to go round number six so in round number six I have to race a motorcycle which is it, it doesn't happen very often but it's like kind of like racing that shorty it's one of those situations where you have to be able to figure out how 
to run the finish line against the very oddly shaped vehicle or something that you're not used to. Uh, if you're used to just racing dragsters day in and day out and every single lap you're racing against a dragster, it's, it's tough to look at a motorcycle in the other lane. So that is something I was trying to be very careful with here. But fortunately for me, uh, the motorcycle actually had uh, some sort of mechanical failure here towards the start of the lap. As you can see, plenty of room on the big end. I was 005, the motorcycle was 001. So that I would have had a run for my money here. Uh, but uh, I guess fortunate for me, mechanical issues over there. Off of 493, I went 513. Um, and, you know, the 005 kind of gave me that confidence again uh, going into the final round. So after seeing the car run a whole bunch of 493s in a row, I had pretty good confidence that the car was going to run a 493. However, the other lane here in the final round was that of a 549. So that made me decide to bump the number up to a 494. I just thought I would have a good look on this race and I had been running the finish line really well. I was confident that I could do that really well and I could see the finish line really, really good at this racetrack. So I decided to put 494 on the board just because it was so late at night and had been a while since there'd been cars down the track just because, you know, the, the rounds were, were getting super late and people needed a little bit of time to cool down. I was worried there's going to be a little bit of dew on the track. So I thought the car might spin just a skosh. I decided to put a 494 up on the dialing board just because I thought I would have the opportunity to run the finish line well here and uh, I just want to be covered in case the car spun just a little bit. After the hit I felt good on the tree, I was 10 up front and uh, heading down the track it just didn't look like I was going to get there so I decided to cut him loose at the last second. Uh, it was 011 margin on his side and fortunately he was able to break out. Uh, he went two under and I went three thou under which was the lesser of the two breakouts here in the final round which gave me the win you only have one opportunity to win your first race at a racetrack so I was fortunate enough to be able to make that happen and also another first just having a little bushy latte on the way back from the winter circle pictures driving a car down the track that was pretty cool too If you liked this video, let YouTube know. Please hit the like button, click subscribe, and visit the Gallstar TV swag shop to help support the creation of more videos.